Okay, so if you've seen the title of this video, why I'm in the market for a new snowblower. So we're going to take a look here at this John Deere 1025R with a 47 inch John Deere snowblower. Um, the snowblower is pretty well taken care of, pretty, uh, pretty decent. See, John Deere 47 inch, quick hitch. Um, Around here, there's a serial number. As you can see, date of man manufacture date 2017. Um, so I had the snow blower three winters now. So it went through 2017, 2018 winter, 2018, 2019 winter. 2019 2020 winter and we're not done with 2020 winter yet but uh snowblower has been i mean as you can see it's taken care of everything's greased i mean everything's washed out kept clean uh things greased um as you can see i have found some stones with it but this is that plastic impeller everybody doesn't like i haven't had a problem with the plastic impeller yet um, the whole rumor behind this, from what I understand, is John Deere did that so if a stone got caught in here, it would bust this instead of tearing up other shit, which to me doesn't seem sense. I mean, that's what you got shear pins for and shear bolts. Um, apparently you can get a steel replacement for this, but that's probably two, three hundred bucks. Um, so... What well, my problem is, is this black quick hitch system right here. And if you've seen my review video of my 1025 after two years, that'll be linked right up here. You can go check that one out. I mentioned that I didn't like this system then already. And like I said, three years, I mean, I maintain my stuff. You look at this tractor, this tractor's got 200 and some hours on it? Yeah, 201 hours on it. Everything is maintained. Um, it's, there's no maintenance spots on that hitch system at all. But what my problem is, we'll get to it here, is, okay, that, I don't have a problem with. You want it to rock back and forth a little bit to oscillate and follow the ground. What my problem is, so I come back here, I'm just gonna drop it and float where it spends most of its time plowing snow at. I'm gonna take it and then pull it towards me. So I'll just set a block. Block right there against it. Okay. And all I'm doing is grabbing up here on my drift cutter. I'm just gonna push it away from me. I mean, that's a gap. My tape measure fits in there. There you go. When I'm not holding a camera, I can actually get it to go further. Um, so, prove it here. Okay. It's all the way back. Really shoved her that time. And, uh, yeah quality that's after three winters with this thing the problem is is there's five parts here you have the snow blower you have this frame here which has this center swivel pin which gets locked by a pin back here so that's part one part two you have this part here this a frame piece that's part three then you have this frame that's part four and part five is back here which uh, holds the front PTO bearing. So that's part five. So from your tractor, you have one, two, three, four, five if you count the snowblower. But five parts to put a snowblower on. 
And uh, the whole reason why John Deere does that is they can run the same hitch system on a number of tractors. I mean, I was just pulling it up before, and the number of tractors this thing runs on is kind of ridiculous. Um, this system right here probably works just fine on your uh, X700s, your X500 little lawn tractors. But when you start getting up into the subcompact tractors, you know, this is a 1025R, uh, it goes on the 1023E, 1025, or 1026, 1026R, um, 2032R, 2025R, um, this hitch system fits on that, I know off the top of my head. Um, you run into problems, I think, with it. And let's we'll just take a look here at my computer. Them are all the parts for that hitch system. And uh, two of these frame pieces alone are over a thousand bucks if you buy them. Just the parts. Um, we'll jump through here once. So just hop over to a different website. We'll go to Green Parts Store. So, John Deere front quick hitch. There you go for the replacement of that hitch. And that's just the main frame, I think. Um, so, I believe that is just this part and this part. Uh, maybe this part, it's hard to tell in the picture. Um, so you're still not counting back here yet. Um, it just, it's just a bad setup, I think. Um, so, the problem is, is it's, just, it's just too many parts here. So, I mean, you got a pin here. This pin, let me see if I can't get you guys in there. Slip. What the hell? Yeah. So, <laughs> you see the gap in here this pin see how much that spread up hard already I mean my finger gets in there um, I put a straight edge on one of these pieces this piece I put a straight edge on this frame last year and this frame is bent already um, these pins just go into quarter inch steel so the steel gets wallowed out um, if I pull these pins out and look at my snow blower where these pins go in that holes oblonged um, these holes where these pins go in are oblonged, plus this whole frame system's bending and tweaking already. I mean, it's nothing more than a quarter inch plate. I can't imagine if I would pull this apart. If I would pull this system apart here with this uh, pin here and this locking pin, I'm sure where this locking pin goes in, that hole is just wobbled right out. And it's not like I'm beating this thing doing a whole bunch of commercial snowblowing with it. I do a couple of driveways with it. Um... <laughs> I mean, it's I just I'm just speechless on just how bad this thing's wearing out already, and it's not like the snowblower's wearing out. The snowblower is just fine. I mean, the only thing I've ever done to the snowblower is uh, tension to the chain for the chain drive, but this hitch system, there's no maintenance points on it. I mean, there's no bushing sleeves or anything I can replace. It's just all straight into the steel. I mean, no grease fittings on it. And this swivel pin here, there's no way to grease it even. I, I mean, it makes sense from John Deere's point to uh, to make the system fit on all of them. But one size doesn't fit all. I mean, yeah, it's a cool system, the quick attach system. You know, if I had a plow, a broom, a, a blade, but all I have is the snowblower. So the whole thing with this thing swiveling is just uh, a little pointless. I mean, personally, if I was going to keep this snowblower, <laughs> if I was going to keep this, but I'm in the market for a new one, so I've, if I was going to keep this, I would probably weld this right here fast. I would weld this fast here so it can swivel. I'd probably even attempt to see if I can't pull this whole thing off as one piece and wall all of it together and just weld it together and we'll see what it works like but uh I'm in the market for a new one I'm just um I'm sorry John Deere I liked you guys but 
this was a bad idea right here. This quick hitch system, at least on a 1025R. And in my review video, I said, pointed out the fact that this maybe should have been a front mount three point. And somebody actually commented in there that there is a European over in Europe. The Europe models of this 1025R actually have a front three point. John Deere, come on. But I'm on the market for a new snowblower. So here's where I need you guys' help. There isn't very much information on aftermarket snowblowers for the John Deere 1025R online. I found limited information. There is one company I found a pretty nice snowblower from that I'm going to email here and try to find out some more information about before I say too much about them. But I'll show you a picture here in a little bit of their hitch system. Their hitch system looks like it's looks like part of it's cast iron even. Um, their snowblower mounts, or I mean their snowblower, how um, my shoot here mounts with these three little tabs, they have a regular ring, a whole collar that goes around there. It's got like eight bolts in it. I mean, it just, it looks so much better built. The uh, auger is actually looks like it's serrated, um, probably even thicker. This is only like eighth inch. I'm thinking this is a cord wrench. Uh, it just looks like it's built so much better. So I'll we'll walk over here to the computer and I'll show you a picture. So first off, that is the mount. Now if you look at, I don't know if I can zoom in on this one. Oh yeah. Man, sorry about this. That almost looks cast iron to me. I mean, it's really hard to tell from a picture, but then that looks like just a normal tube. I don't know. I, I can't tell if that's plasma cut or if it's cast iron. So I'm going to email these guys and try to get some more information on their, uh, even look at the mounting ear for the uh, hydraulic cylinder. There's no grease fitting on that, but you look at, that's probably an inch, inch thick. Let's come over here and look at this hydraulic cylinder. What's that? Two little cord wrench ears. And you can tell it's wearing out because that's where you get dry powdery rust from. But, uh, I'll show you the snowblower now. So, here's a snowblower. So, I mean, just look at this mount system. I mean, frankly, that's the first thing I look at is, there's no swivel. It almost looks like a three-point setup, the way it is. I mean, you're missing a top link, but it looks like they kind of got their mount system from a three-point. Um, got a nice drive shaft system here. I mean, it just looks beefy. It looks so much better built. Um, you look like you got longer travel than the hydraulic cylinder, even. It looks like a longer hydraulic cylinder. Um, so, that I mean, the black ring, there's one, two, three, three bolts, probably six bolts holding that chute rotate on. This must come as an option for a uh, electronic deflex. Sorry about my hand there. Um, you don't got any goofy cable system. It looks like there is just a hydraulic motor back here that do the rotate. Um, you look at their auger in there. You can see it's serrated. Um, another nice thing I like, I like where they got their skid shoes on here. I got their easy adjustable from the back. They almost look like uh, snowplow skid shoes. I don't know. Um, as you can see on this one. Sorry about the water, but just from the way the snowplow sits, is actually wearing into the steel on the back here. And, uh, you know, like I said, their rotate looks like it's a motor instead of this weird, funky cable system that John Deere has going on here. Um, this side's a little bit better to see. I mean, that's just from rubbing on the ground. And 
I haven't even used hardly any of my uh, cutting edge yet. Um, they come factored with electronic actuator, or it must be an option. This uh, I kind of cobbled together myself, um, which is actually what I need to work on today because it stopped working. But it it's just such a more better snowblower setup, I think. Um, so I'm going to email that company and try to find out some more information on that one. But, like I said earlier here, I need you guys' help. So if you guys know of any other aftermarket snowblowers that fit on a John Deere 1025R, or you have the one I showed in the picture, which, I don't know if I want to say the company's name yet or not. I want to find out more information before I say too much. Um, uh, let me know what you think of it. Let me know what you think of the hitch system. I'll also be putting my email address down in the description down here underneath this video. Um, feel free to email me if you got some pictures of the one I showed you. The other thing I'm curious of is if you bought a snowblower or you have a snowblower on a 1025R or even an X700, X800, just put your snowblower on the ground in a flat spot on concrete. You know. Pull it towards you, throw a block up against it or something, push it away from you, and let me know what you got for a gap. And let me know how many years you used your snowblower. I'm just kind of curious to see if it's a progressive problem the more you use it or if it comes from, I don't remember what mine was from the factory, but I know for a fact it was not that bad. Um, I'm just kind of curious what a brand new one is, but my uh, John Deere dealer's 10 miles away in this direction I don't go very often so uh, always I'd kind of go out there and try to find one on the lot and just play with it <laughs> but let me know what you think if you have one what your measurements are um, again if you know any other aftermarket ones or you know of any other snow blowers that go on the front of a John Deere 1025R this is a 2017 model tractor um, email comment down below email me um, Whatever. Uh, I mean, I could go through and replace this hitch every three years, but that hitch right there is 700 and some bucks. I could go through and replace parts, but some prices on these parts are 500 and some bucks for each piece. I could go through and spend how many hours of my time to try to weld them in or try to put bear bearing sleeves in them or something, but is it worth my time? My time is a little more valuable than that. I got other stuff to work on than try to re-engineer a snowblower. So, uh, yeah. If you know anything, let me know because, I mean, there should not be that many parts to make a snowblower. And uh, if you see the price on some of these, Some of the frames in that were like 500 bucks, 400 bucks, 300 bucks. It's just no. No. So, hit me up. Let me know. And as always, have a nice day. Comment, rate, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, right down here there's a red button. Click subscribe, click the little bell next to it so you get notified when I post videos. And hopefully by next winter, we'll have a nice shiny new snowblower of some sort. Because I really don't want to go through another winter with this thing. I mean, it works fine for a snowblower. It blows decent. I have absolutely zero problems with the snowblower. My problem has to do with that. But, yeah. So the guys got you on the GoPro here now, and I'm just kind of jiggle this back and forth and try to show you some different angles so you can see the slot for yourself. Um, so, let will try to stick the GoPro around a couple spots to show you that hitch, and we'll jiggle it back and forth here a little bit and uh, see what we get.
Well, if you made it 20 minutes into this video and uh, listened to all my uh, rambling and ranting about a snowblower, um, it's obviously a subject that you're interested in, so I thank you for sticking around this long. And uh, hopefully we'll figure something out here with all of us together. Um, maybe find a better alternative to John Deere snowblower, maybe something built a little bit better. And I think that when I found, like I said, I want to find out some more from the company, but uh, I think it seems like a pretty decent snowblower. Um, but if you know of any others, or like I said in the video, if you know of that one that I showed, um, if you know any information about it or have any pictures of it, anything like that, feel free to comment below the video. And I'll also put my email address in the description down below too. So you can email me directly because I know some of you guys don't like commenting on videos publicly. And uh, YouTube took away the messaging feature, so I finally took the time to set up an email for uh, YouTube. So uh, if you guys don't want to comment down below, feel free to email me privately. And uh, yeah, if you got pictures, um, like I said too, you got a John Deere snowblower, this snowblower. Just put it down on the ground and float and slide it one way, measure it, push it the other way, see what you get for measurement. Let me know that too. We'll see if it's a systemic issue or if maybe I got a lemon or I, I don't know. I'm just, for what you pay for the snowblower, I'm not really impressed with it and uh, just not all that thrilled. Um, it, it When you start looking around at other snowblowers from other vendors like Kubota, and I believe, well, I'll let that out of here, but uh, Kubota Snowboard looks a lot beefier than what this John Deere one does. But like I said, I think a lot of that problem has to do with the fact that they are trying to make one snowblower fit multiple pieces of equipment um, with the plastic and impeller too. I believe that was the issue with that is on the uh, the smaller garden tractors, they don't have enough power to actually shear shear bolts so they would damage stuff and that's why they did the plastic impeller but uh, that's just rumor what I've heard um, not confirmed or denied or anything like that but uh, yeah feel free to email me reach out comment down below click that like button and uh, hopefully we'll find something out and get some more information and uh, we'll figure something out together uh, thanks for watching be sure to like comment rate subscribe and as always have a nice day. Happy Saturday. When I'm not holding a camera, I can actually get it to go further. Um, so, prove it here. Okay. It's all the way back. Really shoved her that time. And, uh, yeah. Quality. Nothing runs like a deer. Except for their snowblowers. They run like a dead deer. <laughs>